Shimano, and today I'll be delivering a 10 to 15 minute speech on philosophy. So if you need to catch up on your sleep, you're welcome. <laughs> now, maybe this picture seems familiar to you. Waking up early in the morning, heading to school after a quick breakfast, or more likely no breakfast at all, heading to school where you're bored all day, coming home tired from all of your classes, and then getting ready to do it all over again the next day. This type of schedule is taxing, it's stressful, it's hard to keep up with, and I don't think that it's very uncommon, especially at a school like this, where everybody is obsessed with their own academic rigor. And it can become tiring, it can feel like it's meaningless to continue, because you don't feel like you're making any progress. Even through high school, you have to deal with four years, and then after that, if you're planning to go to college, you have to deal with even more schooling after that. So it can feel very appealing to just give up on it, I think, because often it might be nice to think of the world like a well-oiled machine where everything has its part, where everything works together to create a cohesive whole. But in the end, I don't think that anybody could truly say that they understand how every part of that machine works, and I don't think that anybody could truly say that they understand even what that machine is doing. So in the end, the analogy collapses and the world can seem meaningless. And I've personally had a difficult time dealing with that throughout my life because I've often felt that the things that I'm doing are meaningless. I've had goals and told myself that I'm working for this or that. But even those goals don't seem to hold very much meaning in a meaningless world because when I die, everybody's going to forget me and it can feel as though there's no point to continue with all of this. So how can we reconcile this? Well, according to the French Algerian philosopher Albert Camus, there are two ways of dealing with this, which are to take a leap of faith and to practice his own personal philosophy of absurdism. And while he encouraged people to practice absurdism, I'm going to discuss a leap of faith because it is also a genuine strategy for dealing with meaninglessness. Now, what is a leap of faith? This is essentially what happens when you tell yourself that you have a goal. This is what I was doing when I was telling myself that I have ambitions. Taking a leap of faith is like placing hope that there is truly meaning somewhere in life. Ancient Greek philosophers did this as well. It's not just to place a goal. It can be anything. You can believe that there's meaning in something, whether it's something you do, something you work for, you can believe that there's meaning within it. And when you believe that there's meaning within something, that can fill the hole that the meaningless world leaves for you. But that didn't work for me, and I don't believe that it worked for Albert Camus either, because it can often feel like, in spite of this, the world continues to be meaningless. So what can we do instead? Well, the answer, according to Albert Camus, is a revolt. And this could be something that's a little bit difficult to understand, but the way I like to think about it is this. I believe everybody wants meaning in their life. I personally look for meaning my entire life, maybe in my goals or ambitions or in my schoolwork sometimes, or maybe in my various embarrassing crushes. But despite that, I don't think that I've ever found anything that I could truly call the meaning of my life. I don't think I've truly ever received an answer to the question of what the meaning of life is, and I don't think that I ever will. So, because of this, because it seems as though the world is never going to tell us of its meaning, we have to do something else. We have to somehow find another way to reconcile this. And according to Albert Camus, this is by accepting it. We have to take this meaningless world. We have to fully convince ourselves that it is meaningless. We have to use philosophy or whatever boring stuff we want to deal with. And we have to tell ourselves repeatedly that we are living in a world that is truly meaningless. And we have to believe it. And once we believe it, and only once we fully convince ourselves of this fact, then we can revolt against it. We can live our life regardless, and we can continue to laugh and enjoy ourselves and have a good time. And this could be something that seems counterintuitive, counterintuitive because in a world that's meaningless, how can we derive enjoyment when we're so unfulfilled from a lack of meaning? Well, I believe that while this makes sense, while this line of reasoning is uh, acceptable, I believe that it makes more sense to think about it from a different perspective, because perspective is everything. For example, you might think that when you die, everybody's going to forget everything that you've done. When you die, everybody is going to forget all of your accomplishments. But that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing, because at the same time, once you die, everybody is also going to forget all the mistakes that you've made, which means that if nothing you do matters, why does it matter how you live your life? You can live your life the way that you want. And that's why I believe that a revolt against meaningless can, meaninglessness can lead to freedom. It doesn't have to be restricting. It doesn't have to tie you down to a meaningless world. It's instead setting you free to enjoy yourself because meaninglessness cannot prevent you from enjoying a laugh with your friends or getting rich or getting married or building a corporate empire or 
creating up the math test that you have next period. You can do all of that and more with your life because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you do with your life. So that means you're free to do whatever you'd like. And I think that in these moments where you find your own happiness, it's liberating in a way. It liberates you from the feeling of meaninglessness because if you're enjoying yourself, I don't think that's meaningless at all. I think that if we're enjoying ourselves, if we're having a good time, then that makes life it worth living itself. And this is the context for what is maybe Albert Camus' most famous line, which is that one must imagine Sisyphus is happy. And yes, that's where I got this philosophy, from an outdated internet meme, but it wasn't outdated at the time of writing this presentation. So, what does this mean? Well, Sisyphus was a mythological character who was given a punishment by the gods. He was forced to roll a boulder up a hill for all of eternity, and even though he had no chance of ever actually getting to the top of that hill, he was forced to undertake this burden anyway. And that's something that appears very meaningless. I don't understand how this man could be happy, because after all, his life is the only thing that could be considered more meaningless than things that I learned in my math class. But despite this, Albert Camus believes that he has to be happy anyway. And this is because his happiness is the ultimate act of rebellion against his punishment. It's the ultimate act of rebellion against his meaningless life. And because he lives the most meaningless life you could ever imagine, he must also be happy. Because it's liberating to live that way. It's liberating to continue to struggle, even though you have no reason to. It's liberating to continue to try to push the boulder up the hill, even though he, has, he knows he could never possibly get to the top. But he lives his life under his own conditions. And he doesn't let that stop him from enjoying himself. And even though that's counterintuitive, even though that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, I still believe that we can take important lessons away from it. Because, especially at a school like this one, we're under a lot of constant stress and pressure, and that meaninglessness, that desire to give up, is common. It's easy to give in to such pressure, but I believe that that's thinking about it in the wrong way. Because, for example, one time I got a C on my physics test, and I was crestfallen because I thought of myself as one of the nerds, you know? I thought of myself as one of the smart kids who I always got good grades, and honestly, my grades became part of the meaning of life to me. And that was something that I was realizing was becoming detrimental to me, because as I like coped with the bad grade that I had gotten, I began to realize that maybe it wasn't as important as I initially thought it was. Maybe it was okay to get a bad grade. Maybe it is okay to fail sometimes at life, because if you try so hard to succeed, if you tie yourself to these meanings, these things that you think are the most important parts of your life, well, then you're not truly living life to its fullest. You're tying yourself down to something instead of embracing the inherent meaningless of, meaninglessness of the world and living on regardless. So later on, I got a bad grade on my math test. It might have been a B, not that bad, but bad for like nerd standard. So I got, I got a mediocre grade on my math test. And I realized that I didn't care because a math grade can't stop me from being happy, just like a boulder can't stop Sisyphus from being happy. And even though one of these things is obviously much worse than another, at some sometimes at this school it doesn't really feel like it. It feels like all of the kids are under exactly the same punishment that Sisyphus was. And so that's what I believe this philosophy is about. Even if we live in a world that's meaningless, we can still make the most of it. We can still enjoy ourselves regardless. And it can feel easy to give up, because this is something that's much easier said than done. But I believe that even if this is the case, even if there's so many struggles, even if there's so many difficulties getting in our way from enjoying our lives, even though it can often seem impossible to continue, this doesn't have to be the way we think about it. Because like I said before, perspective can be everything. If we choose to think about struggles as something to be enjoyed, rather than something to be feared, or something to overcome, instead of something to give up or something to be hated, then we can make the most out of our lives anyway. We can make the most out of even a bad situation. And I think the most uh, prevalent uh, example of how influential your perspective can be is the concept of beauty. And this is like a really cringe topic, but I believe truly that there is beauty in everything. Even the smallest thing, even the ugliest thing can hold a lot of beauty if you choose to think about it that way because it all depends on what you think. It all depends on how you choose to perceive something. And if you perceive something in a positive way, 
then the world doesn't seem so bad after all. The world doesn't seem like it's just one struggle after all. So to close, I'd like to talk about the image on slides here, because it's a picture of the sky, and I believe that it's a fairly beautiful picture at least. And I believe that the sky is something beautiful, but when you think about it, is there any inherent meaning to the idea of the sky? There isn't. There isn't any reason why the sky should be there other than science, but that's not what I'm talking about. There isn't any reason that we should have to live under the sky. There's no reason the sky should look the way it does, and it's constantly changing, and it seems meaningless to look at one fleeting image of the sky. But I think that that is not the point. I don't think that that's the point of beauty. Because even though the sky's existence is meaningless, it's often something of beauty. It's something we can still appreciate. And that's what I think this philosophy is about. Even if our lives are meaningless, even if there's no reason for us to continue, we can continue anyway, and maybe we can make something beautiful out of it. Thank you.